So I guess it goes without saying that things won't be quite the way they used to be once this is all over. And yes, it's been a horrible ordeal for a lot of people. No, no, I'm not talking about people who've only had to stay indoors. I'm talking about people who've had to go through some serious stuff like losing a loved one or losing their job, financial issues that will impact them for the rest of their lives. I really hope that we'll all learn to be kinder and more appreciative of all the people and things we took for granted until they were taken away from us. But then again, that's still asking a lot from some people these days because there's quite a lot of us that are just dummies and there's not much that can be done about these folks. Personally, I'd just be happy if it changed the way we think about spreading germs because God knows I've seen countless men walk out of public bathroom stalls without washing their hands and straight out into the world to spread their nasty. Touching doorknobs, petting people's pets, pinching babies' cheeks, touching fruits and vegetables and on and on and on. But let's talk about the future, about when things go back to normal so we can all go back to our lives and our awesome summer plans. You know, before we were all so rudely interrupted. Speaking of summer plans, we've all heard about summer blockbusters being pushed back further down the year and even next year. I heard some people saying that when things start going back to normal, the theaters will be showing older movies while they wait for the new movies to be released on their new dates, you know, as a way to slowly bring the skittish, quarantined population back to the theaters, but apparently the theater chains themselves are now in big trouble financially. For all we know, it's quite possible that by the time this is all over, and people are actually ready to go back to the theaters, there may not be any theaters to go back to. We don't know exactly what will happen, it's still all up in the air, all we can do is wait and see. And I know that big screen TVs and the convenience of streaming and all the other ways people can keep themselves entertained these days like video games, podcasts, YouTube and on and on and on, and the cost of going to the theaters themselves being so high in comparison, some people would rather just stop going to the theaters altogether and that's also very much a possibility. And while I haven't been to the theaters as often as I used to go, at least 2-3 times a month, because I've been busy with my job and all that, I still very much enjoyed the experience and I really do miss it. There's really nothing like seeing an event film opening night with the hardcore fans. And some movies just deserve to be watched in the theaters at least once in my opinion. And then there's the films that go under the radar, films that deserve much better than they get when they're released for whatever reason, and some of these become cult classics later on when they're released on home video, and you just wish you had caught it in the theaters. This whole thing about the theaters possibly going away for good got me thinking about making a list of older movies that I would like to watch at least one more time on the big screen, or that will make me want to go back to the theaters if they use this strategy to slowly bring the audience back once things start going back to normal. You know, once we've all gotten our vaccine shots. Okay, so this is a personal list that I've made for myself. Some of you might agree, some of you might not, but these are the films that I came up with. Number one, Dread. Now I didn't see this in theaters, I'm guilty of not supporting this when it came out, but I heard great things about it and I rented it and I was blown away. Carl Urban gave quite a performance with half his face covered throughout the film. It also stars Lena Headey, or Hetty, however you pronounce her name, Cersei Lannister herself in another awesome, awesome villainous role and she knocks it out of the park. If only we hadn't slept on it when it came to the theaters, we might have gotten a sequel or two by now. But if the theaters put it on again, I'll be sure to watch it on the big screen with a large popcorn full of butter and an ice cold vanilla coke. Number 2. Alita Battle Angel Speaking of films that need and deserve a sequel or two, Alita Battle Angel. Like I said, I've been busy with work and I haven't been going to the theaters as often as I used to, so I did miss this gem when it came out. But again, I rented it and I fell in love with the characters, the story, the amazing world created by the manga writer and brought to the silver screen by Robert Rodriguez. I know fans of Alita have been trying to get Disney to make a sequel and the way things are looking, Disney would be foolish not to listen to them and go for this home run serve to them on a silver platter. And I really hope they do because this could easily become a very profitable franchise and all they have to do is green light it. Number 3. Alien and Aliens I wasn't born when these movies came out so there's no way I could have seen them in theaters. But my brother rented them when I was about 10 or 11 and they were incredibly terrifying and exciting at the same time. And they're now considered to be sci-fi classics. I can be a bit of a minimalist in my life but in recent years I have started to collect a small number of Blu-rays and these two are my favorite in my tiny Blu-ray collection. If you're a sci-fi fan and you haven't seen these films, bruh. Also a strong female character in the 80s? 
I know it's hard to believe these days, but yeah, it's not a brand new phenomenon that somebody just came up with. Number 4. Marvel Movies Now I know, technically it's supposed to be number 5 because I've already mentioned 4 films, but I'm grouping franchise movies together and therefore number 4 is 3 Marvel movies. Now Marvel Cinematic Universe or MCU as some people call it has ushered in a completely new era to the movie industry, the way films are actually made and the fandom. And I can't possibly make a list without a Marvel movie so so I picked 3 out of the 20 plus films that I would want to watch at least one more time on the big screen. And sure they are popcorn flicks but they've managed to accomplish things that were unprecedented. For me, personally, Captain America was the corniest character for the longest time and me being a DC fan didn't help Cap's case. But when I watched Captain America Winter Soldiers in theaters, three times by the way, Cap became one of my favorite superheroes of all time, top 10. I know there are Marvel fans who think Marvel can do no wrong, but I disagree. I think they get by and avoid criticism a lot of the time because they pack their films with a lot of humor and people are willing to overlook a lot if you can make them laugh. But the Russo brothers who directed Winter Soldier as their first of four Marvel films came in with a different flavor. Where sure there was humor but it didn't hit you over the head with joke after joke. And it had a sense of real stakes and seriousness that hit just the perfect chord with me that I actually bought my first Marvel Blu-ray. And I'd love to watch this film at least one more time in the theaters. My other two Marvel entries shouldn't be a surprise. Captain America Civil War and Avengers Infinity War. Like I said. The Russo brothers and the writing team of Marcus and McFeely brought that tone of proper amount of earnestness instead of packing the movie with silly bits. The stories had serious conflict which was handled very well and the characters felt more grounded even though they are larger than life superheroes. Number 5. Mad Max Fury Road Now this is gonna make some people mad, no pun intended, but Fury Road is the only Mad Max film that I've seen so far. I know, I know, I should check out the older ones and they are in my list which keeps getting longer every day. But Fury Road I did see in the theaters and it was amazing. The story, the colors, the pacing, the stunts, the performances, everything was brilliant about this film and I enjoyed every minute of it. If you haven't seen it, it's a must watch. Mad Max Fury Road deserves a theater viewing at least twice in my opinion. Number 6. Fight Club 7 and Zodiac Now even though these aren't part of a franchise, I'm grouping these three films together because I, I just couldn't pick one of the three. But the fact that they're all directed by the same director, David Fincher, it also helped justify it. Kind of. Anyway, as fun as it is to watch a popcorn blockbuster in a packed theater, I found that I enjoy watching the quieter and darker films with less people. I don't need the talkers, the whisperers, the texters and toddlers when I'm watching a film like Fight Club or Seven or Zodiac. Listen. I'm no cinematic expert, I'm a casual when it comes to a lot of things. I'm sure there are better films that are in the same vein that are far superior to these three films and I'd love recommendations but these three do have a special place in my heart and my tiny Blu-ray collection. Fight Club, well, it's Fight Club, I can't say anymore because then I'd be breaking the first rule of Fight Club except if you haven't seen it, do yourself a favor and watch it. And while I'm not obsessed with serial killers as much as some other people are out there, but I understand people's fascination with the strange phenomena and Seven and Zodiac are my two favorite films on the subject. Number 7. Ghibli Movies Or Ghibli Movies as some people say, I still don't know the right way to pronounce them. Honestly, I've only gotten into anime in the last few years and I still haven't gotten around to watching a single Ghibli movie or Ghibli movie. I know, it's it's practically a sin but I got stuff going on man, I'm busy with work and my watch list is getting longer as it is. I would love to watch my first ever Ghibli movie, any of them, in the theaters, on the big screen and preferably with subtitles. I did start out watching anime that was dubbed in English and it was fun, it was still awesome but once I started watching with original Japanese audio and English subtitles, it really added an extra layer of enjoyment, at least for me. I really don't understand people who complain about having to read subtitles. They really need to get over it and try something new for change. I mean, watch a film in a different language, add a little culture to your repertoire, man. Number 8. Kiss Kiss Bang Bang if you're one of those people who only knows Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man or Sherlock Holmes, you really should give Kiss Kiss Bang Bang a shot. It was directed by Shane Black who did Iron Man 3, which isn't my favorite MCU movie but I've enjoyed his other films a lot more like Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. 
Now, I don't know personally a lot of people who watch this film, which is a shame, but those who have really swear by it that it's one of the best films and I recently got it on Blu-ray because one, why wouldn't I? And two, I really don't trust buying stuff digitally. Like they can easily delete it off your cloud or wherever you have it. And what are you going to do about it? They'll just cite some line from their TOS that you probably signed and agreed to without reading a single line of and that's that. Am I a little paranoid? Yes. Yes, I, I totally am. So yeah, if they play Kiss Kiss Bang Bang in theaters, I am so there. Number 9. The Big Lebowski Now it's one of those cult classics that you'll hear fans gush about and quote over and over and over. I personally feel that just as we have comfort foods, so there are comfort films and TV shows and video games that serve as comfort entertainment. It's different from exciting entertainment and thought-provoking entertainment. Basically, it's something you watch to relax and feel at home. The Big Lebowski is that film for me and many other people. If you haven't seen it, you don't have to. I'm not gonna scold you or anything, but give it a shot if you come across it. Now, I didn't see it in theaters when it came out, so I wouldn't be opposed to watching the dude on the big screen for the first time. Number 10. The Lord of the Rings Trilogy now, there isn't anything I can say that hasn't already been said about this series of films. People these days are awestruck by the Avengers movies, but in my opinion, the Lord of the Rings trilogy is still better than every Marvel movie up to date. But you could ask me tomorrow and I may feel totally the opposite way, so take it with a grain of salt. If you haven't seen this trilogy, come on, like, what are you, like a newborn baby or something? Come on, get on it. And while I do own the Blu-ray box set of the Lord of the Rings, extended edition, I didn't realize how much I'd love to watch them one more time on the big screen in a theater until the possibility of the theaters going away forever started to become an actual possibility in our lifetime. Anyway, that's my list. Honorable mentions include The Exorcist, The 40 Year Old Virgin, Akira, Predator, The Silence of the Lambs. I'm sure after I'm done posting this video, I'll remember tons of films that I forgot to mention, films that are probably on your list. So let me know in the comments what older movies would you put on your list that you'd want to watch on the big screen at least one more time. And as annoying as this whole lockdown thing has been, it has really afforded some of us the opportunity to work on stuff we've been putting off because we've either been too lazy or too busy. I know I've been doing a lot of drawing and writing and also working on videos like this that's like part of a series of videos about living in the post quarantine world and other subjects. So thank you for watching, please like, share and subscribe, hit the notification bell for upcoming videos and projects, follow me on social medias, all the necessary links are in the description. Fair warning though, I may post or retweet some risque art or tweet some edgy jokes in case you're the sensitive type, so you've been warned. I'm also creating a discord server for aspiring artists, so let me know in the comments if you're interested and I'll see you armadillos in the next one.